All right, I'd like to share some things with you folks concerning pistons. We're going to talk about motorcycle pistons. These are two-stroke pistons. They actually, these principles apply to just about anything that uses a piston in a combustion engine. So uh, let's get along with the basics here. Uh, for starters, most pistons have an arrow on the crown. Uh, it'll be located usually on the side that uh, is the front of the engine and the reason that it's there is on two strokes it's to orient the piston correctly as well for the wrist pin offset as well as the pin location for the ring ends. The reason that the rings need to be located in a two stroke is to stop the ring ends from snagging the ports that are in the cylinder bore. On a four stroke there are no pins the rings are allowed to scrub back and forth like this as the piston travels up and down the cylinder, the hone marks are able to cause the ring to move like this in the bore. This helps keep the bottom of the ring polished and the ring land clean so that it can seal and do its job. The two strokes do it to a small degree, but typically uh, they have a carbon build up a little bit sooner than a four stroke will, obviously, because there's oil in the fuel and the rings aren't able to travel as far. There is a slight amount of travel. We'll talk about these two pistons. They're both for a 440 Mako. They're both forged. The one on the right is a single ring. The one on the left is a double ring. They each use an L ring. The Weissco on the left uses one on the top. The second ring is a standard ring. You can use two standard rings. and Even some pistons have two L rings. The reason that you would use a second ring is to help with heat transfer and to help seal. This increases the longevity and makes the engine uh, a little bit less fussy as far as the tolerances go. It'll, it'll run a little bit longer and not fall off performance wise as things get worn, which everything gets worn if you use it. Uh, let's talk about some other things. These two pistons, although they're similar, in appearance, similar in configuration, uh, obviously the two rings versus the single ring. They both use different wrist pin locks. The Weissco uses a spiral lock. Although there are other manufacturers that use spiral locks, spiral locks are typically found in Weisco's. They use a groove that doesn't have a notch, typically. The way you install them is you start the end in you compress this slightly into the bore and you turn it with a small tool, screwdriver or a pick. Very carefully you rotate it, or excuse me, very carefully you go around and you force this down the hole. And when it's opened up like this, it will go down into the bore and it will snap into the groove and it is a solid piece. It becomes solid. There is no end at that point. As you can see, there is no end. I don't have a wire snap ring out here. Uh, but we'll talk about wire snap rings. I've drawn a little picture here and it shows the different configurations of wire snap rings. Wire snap rings have this reputation for coming out. The reason that they come out is because they've been installed incorrectly, not through a fault of the design. What happens is this is the piston travel. The piston travels at a very high rate of speed and then comes to a complete stop at the top and the bottom of its stroke. If you install the piston circlip with the opening off to the side in the 3 o'clock or the 9 o'clock position, the weight of the snap ring when the piston stops at the top and the bottom may allow it to actually close itself up and come out. The answer to stop that is install it with the opening at the 12 o'clock or the 6 o'clock location and on this type of snap ring with the tails, trim the tails off reduce the weight. This is a true arc type. This drawing's not the best, but this represents the, the little ears that have the holes for snap ring pliers. Same thing, you install it with the opening at the top or the top or the bottom. This type without the tails will usually be made out of a smaller diameter wire than the ones with the tails. They don't have a tendency to come out as much, but they can. To be certain Put the opening at the top or the bottom the same way. All, 
all three of these types always put the opening of where the ends meet at the top or the bottom be certain that it's seated in its groove and you will not have a problem the other thing that has to happen is be sure that the type of snap ring you're using or the circlip is the proper one for the groove that's in the piston Weissco is very good about marking their pistons CS means circlip spiral CW means circlip wire this square type configuration is for the spiral lock this radius configuration is a shallow groove and a radius that's for the wire lock you may if you're brave use a wire lock in a spiral lock piston I don't recommend it in fact I advise against it I have done it but you're on your own I will not take any responsibility for it so there's the disclaimer all right now let's move along talk about your wrist pin there's been some people that think that wrist pins spin turn in the bore they do not they are designed to turn freely obviously but as the piston travels up and down the rod will change angle like this and you can see the rod does this that would cause your wrist pin to turn back and forth like this okay it does not turn spin in the bore it does not rotate it may rotate but not typically typically they turn back and forth like this now it may turn a little further one way than it does the other way because of engine acceleration or deceleration and actually turn in the bore but typically if you held the engine at a steady rpm that wrist pin will just turn back and forth like this that's so that's the wrist pin they do not spin they will not wear your snap rings out as some people imply. Now let's move along. The other reason that there's an arrow on a piston, the piston wrist pin bore is offset. The reason it's offset is to make up for the thrust of the piston as the cylinder pressure pushes the piston down the bore. That arrow is to orient the piston correctly in the bore in relation to the direction that the engine rotates. This is true of four-stroke and two-stroke engines. Four-stroke engines, if they do not have an arrow on the crown, automotive typically will have a notch. That notch is the forward, uh, faces forward of the engine. Please consult your service manual if you're not sure. But motorcycles typically have arrows. Automotive, heavy equipment, trucks, they may have arrows, they may have notches. Uh, that's typically how they, they are oriented in their cylinder bores. And it is important because of the direction that the engine rotates to offset the force as the thrust of the piston traveling down the bore. You must stop the piston from rocking as much as possible. You need to get it over against the cylinder bore to keep it square in the bore so the ring can seal. Very important. So hopefully that's cleared up some things that people may wonder about pistons. Um, I'll have some other videos soon and some other things, ignition timing and carburation and that sort of thing. Hopefully this is a help to you.